Bizrat Hashem Chavra. I'll try sending the link in the description to the song because it's a beautiful song. Birchas Abanim, Masifta Waterbury. Josh, it's great to have you on. Everybody knows it's five days until Shabbos Kodesh. Five days until Shabbos. We're already counting down. Um, is my internet okay? It says internet connection is unstable. Unstable. I think it's okay. And we have 31 days until Purim and 46 days of longing. So there's a lot of excitement coming. Spring is here, or it's almost here, right? It's getting nicer in Tinak. The weather is getting nicer. So all the more so in Israel, I'm sure it's getting really nice, around like 70 degrees. So we're, we're all excited to get back. So all the learning today is for the Rafua of Pesach Ubin bin Yusuf Asara, Baruch Abbas Yehudis, Miriam Dorubes Chanil Cheved, Yonah Baspasia, Shir Baspasia, Sinai Ubin Bimani, and every Nisham and Klai Israel that needs a Rafua physically, spiritually, mentally, is Rat Hashem. Through this learning, they'll have a Rafua. And I'm going to admit some other Chavra, I'm going to disable the waiting room. So we have um, Avi Kirikowski, Avi Kirikowski, and Josh. Josh, Avi Kirikowski. Unbelievable. We're just meeting people. We're just connecting on Israel. That's what we're trying to do. Hello, fellow Misa. If one washed his hands in the morning properly and he has no certain knowledge that his hands later became unclean from anything, nevertheless, since in the interim his attention was diverted from the cleanliness of his hands, even if he spent the time between studying Torah, is also considered a diversion of attention from the state of his hands. Right, so last halakha that we learned, right, we spoke about um, whether he washes hands properly, or even if he washes hands properly, but later uh, touched his hair or any unclean place on his body, right? So um, he has to wash his hands before prayer. He does, right? If Even if you're learning Torah before prayers and you touch something, you touch like your hair, Right, you have to wash your hands before prayer. So, and um, all right, so he must also wash them with water for the purpose of praying. Right, we have to wash our hands for the purpose of praying. Now, however, in this case, when one does not know whether he has touched an unclean place or not, or right, let's say you're learning Torah, after you learn Torah, you go to Minyan or you go to Daven. And you don't know if you touch an unclean place. You don't know if you touch your hair. What do you do? And you, he need not travel to different places to specifically find water. Right? So if you're unsure, then you don't have to go out of your way to find water. Thus, if he does not have water available, and if you'll go to get it, and he will miss praying with the congregation, he should not go after the water. So in a case where... Um, even if you're unsure, if you touch anything unclean and you have water available where you're praying, let's say we're all praying at Gissin 6 or at IDC uh, at, at 0 for 5, there are water fountains, there's sinks available, right? So we're able to have water. They're there. We won't have to go out of our way. But let's say there's none of that. Then you shouldn't go out of your way, out of your way if you're questionable, if you're uncertain but rather clean his hands with anything that cleanses and pray with the congregation. And uh, we could see further in the Be'er Hesiv what that really means. But um, with anything earthly, I think that's what we learned last uh, halakha, if we're not mistaken. Anything earthly, uh, we should clean our hands and then pray with the congregation and do not miss that time. Now, we're moving on to Sikha 30 of Rabbi Nachman. This is a very interesting one. I'm just, um, there's a lot of secrets that hopefully you guys can reveal because I don't really know the secrets. Um, <laughs> so hopefully all of you are ready. Joshua, Kira, and, and Nitai walking the streets of Sfat, so geschmack. Wow, we're getting like this Sfat energy right now, Nitai. We're getting this Sfat energy. So geschmack. So we're going to Sikha 30. I think we're going to do two parts to the Sikha. I think it's better if we do two parts, which is really exciting. We're going to have a mini series, a mini series within the series. Kira is excited. <laughs> Kira is excited. Rabbi Nachman starts off, there are many who would spend much time in the lavatory, in the bathroom, 
attempting to totally cleanse out their bodies before praying in the morning. We actually went over this halacha a couple days ago, right, about cleaning yourself before prayers. The rabbi spoke out strongly and ridiculed this practice. We'll see what that means. He said, Rabbeinu said, that the main thing to remember is that the Torah was not given to ministering angels, rather to us, we're not angels. It is not necessary to go beyond the requirement of the law, right? Do not uh, make extra stringencies to what you're supposed to be doing. We learned that a while back with Rabbeinu in the, in the Rabbi Nachman Essentials. In the code state, only that is forbidden to pray when one actually feels the need to relieve himself. So the Talmudic uh, dictum is one who finds it necessary to move his bowels should not pray. So, um, yeah, this is very interesting. Josh, I don't really know what's going on, but uh, we're going to try our best together to really understand. Um, so we're going to go further in. Still many laws are brought in chapter 92 of the Shulchan Orech, or Chaim, especially dealing with emergencies or when one has no other choice. The Magen Avram, another um, local commentary, follows the opinion of the Rif, right? In Brachos 14a, there's a lot going on. It's okay, it's okay. That one may pray even if he feels a need as long as he can contain himself long enough to walk a league, which is approximately 72 minutes. So from all this, we see that there is no need to be overly strict in this respect. One should not keep himself from prayer and study just for the sake of a mere qualm, which is itself is unnecessary strictness and foolishness. So it seems, I mean, this will be part two of the Sicha, that Sadiqim and especially Rabbi Nachman um, would pretty much fast from Shabbos to Shabbos. They wouldn't eat I don't know if, it, if they would drink, but they wouldn't eat anything from Shabbos to Shabbos. They would only eat on Shabbos, right? So it's insane. It's insane. And Rabbi Nachman, I think this is where the Sikha was created, um, where Rabbi Nachman over time is like, this is just insane. Um, I mean, this is not everyone should be taking on this, um, this crazy practice, this extra stringent practice. Right, to fast from Shabbos to Shabbos, to keep your body cleansed for minion, for talking to the Rebunish Island. Now, now I think the halacha, um, I think what Rabbeinu is trying to say here is that when you, when you wake up in the morning, you go to the bathroom, you relieve yourself, right? So you're clean for davening. Now there's some doubts whether if you're um, in davening itself and you feel the need to go to the bathroom, whether it's a valid prayer, it's not a valid prayer, prayer. We have to look more into that, of what that really means. But Rabbeinu concludes in part one of the Sicha, right? There's still more to the Sicha, but we're going to say part one. The best thing is to pray as soon as you wake up in the morning. If you can easily attend to your needs, then do so. But if not, pray immediately. Even if you have a slight feeling in your bowels, it can be ignored. Now, Rabbeinu says... You don't have to go over the top. You don't have to be super strict. The important thing, I think it's the next Sikha, Sikha Oran 31, we'll be talking about praying early, right? When you wake up, you should be praying right away. You shouldn't leave until later because you have no clue what the day is going to bring to you, right? So if you want to pray at 10 o'clock in the morning, right, you have no clue what, you know, what might come about at 9.30, and then it would delay that prayer and the timing would be off or maybe you wouldn't even get to that prayer at all. So we'll get up to that soon. But regarding removing yourself uh, and relieving yourself, if you do it in the morning before davening, as soon as you wake up, gishmak, right? So you're, you're cleansing yourself. You're making yourself like into to a clean, clean house, a clean vessel. But if you have a small feeling during davening to go, it's also okay. Right, it's also okay. We don't have to be super stringent from what my limited knowledge is, is understanding from this. So we're gonna to return to part two tomorrow. But I just want to look quickly to make to help us understand a little more before we go into uh, part two is the viewpoint of um Rev. Ari Rosenfeld. So, so, again, I know. so Rev. Ari Rosenfeld says 
that this conversation, this sicha, this Torah from our Benu Nachman deals with the topic of Nikias, which means physical, physical purity internally, right? So relieving oneself and having that purity, that cleanliness inside. A person who comes before a king makes sure that he is clean, right? It's, I mean, it's Pasha, right? You go to, um, you know, uh, the prime minister, you know, Israel, Natalie Bennett, you're going to look sharp. You're going to look sharp. You're going to be clean. You're not going to make sure that you have to go to the bathroom right away. Externally, you're going to be clean. You're going to do your hair. You know, I put some gel in. Um, true do. I don't even know what that means. But Geshma. Hey, we're going to look clean. A person who comes to Davin before Hashem must also come clean and spotless. Right? So for this reason, there is a din. There is a judgment that a person must clean himself internally, which means that he must relieve himself in the morning before he goes to Davin. Let's try doing that. If he finds that he has an urge to relieve himself while Davening, it means that his Davening is not pure. Right, because you have some impurities within you. At times, the entire davening is wasted. Right? If you, this is crazy, a crazy topic, guys. We're we're getting into it. Chas v'shalom. Therefore, a person must see it, must see to it that before davening, he relieves himself. Bezrat Hashem Chaver, we should be zocha to relieve ourselves before davening, but on an even deeper level. This is this is uh, one of the takeaways that we should um, bring with us for the rest of the day and for the rest of the week, and for the rest of our lives, is really in any case where we're davening, or we're learning, we should be as pure as possible. We should really be as pure as possible. Internally, externally, I'm giving muster myself. I should be looking good. I should be feeling good, um, and taking care of the goof. Externally and internally, Bezrat Hashem, questions, comments, please feel free. I know that was a really difficult sicha, but, um, you know, we all came out together. We're all laughing together. We're all smiling together. And um, Super Bowl Sunday. Questions, comments, please feel free. And uh, Joshua is having a Super Bowl party at his house. That's the, those are the rumors that are swirling around in South Africa. No one's watching the Super Bowl here. Ah, I guess it's not a thing. <laughs> but I thought that was an interesting topic. I felt like you... Uh explained it well and i can relate wow although i've never spoken about it i can relate <laughs> wow so the fact that you're relating is just it's so high it's so amazing it's so amazing that you're able to relate to that type of sicha and it's amazing it's not so pasha it's not so simple um wow rabinu nachman's words are alive they're mama shalai cover Every single word is so sweet. So, so sweet. Anyone else have anything to say? Thank you, Joshua. So Until tomorrow, to the second part two will be on YouTube. The second part, we'll be doing it tomorrow live on Zoom, and then we'll be posted to YouTube, like every other okay, video. I might, I might have to watch it on YouTube then. Wow, the suspense is so real. Part two. It's so real. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Anyone else? Nita, Reb Nita, Rekira, Besa Migdash. Quick recap is that, um, Reb Samson, before we dive in the morning, we should pray as soon as possible, but we should also relieve ourselves as soon as possible, right? Making ourselves clean before the Rebona and before we pray. Um, really be spotless and as pure as we can be. And part two will be tomorrow of the, of the second part of the Sicha 30. There's a longstanding tradition that before davening, one should learn a, a, bit, a little bit of Chassidus prior to davening, that could be one word of chassidus, that could be a whole line, a whole paragraph, a whole book, but a little bit. And it comes from this idea that before, before davening, we should, one should clear their thoughts. And the best way to clear and be prepare oneself to 
approach Hashem in, in the most honest way is through chassidus, through a cleansing of sorts of everything that you went through the night before and the day before, even though you went to bed saying, saying the Shema, but you woke, and you woke up saying Moda'ani, even until that very point. You got up, you said Moda'ani, you washed your hands, you said a morning brachot, you vowed, and you learn a little chassidus. Even until that point, there's still what to clear. If you go to uh, tomorrow, we can, we'll go more into this, I'm sure. Um, it's very important to start out with a cleanser, not only of the body, of physicality, but also of the soul. Ah. Ah, so it's another takeaway, another, another beautiful takeaway. Thank you, Samson. Anyone else have anything to share, Reb Nittai? Before we conclude. Har Gishmak. Everyone should be healthy, happy, and successful, whether you're in South Africa watching the Super Bowl later, whether you're at the base of Migdash preparing the, the lime limestone, preparing the lime. It's coming, it's coming so soon. It's coming so soon. Coming so soon. Or the cement. We have to look into it. We have to look into it. Coming to a theater, coming to a theater near you. Oh, the Beit Hashem. It's about the Shem. And uh, Nitai, of course, constructing his own Mishkan um, inside his soul, but also outside in his room, as we can see. Looks like a Mishkan. All right, Chavra, just be healthy, be happy, be successful in whatever we're doing, and uh, Gishmak will continue tomorrow.